So the series of talks is a short bit of talk to talk about <laughs> something that bugs everyone. You know, something that that you Traffic. run into yourself or that other people <laughs> run into as well. And one of the things that seems to bug a lot of people is trying to install Python on a machine. <laughs> because what happens is people will come up and say, uh, you need to install this virtual env thing and you need to do the pip and all this other kind of stuff. And, and, well, I, and I, I don't know about some of you, but early on when I was learning Python, it was static. And you may as well have been saying, <laughs> just, it didn't work. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about how Python virtual environments work and what they are and why you need them and why they're so awesome. I would also like to ask other folks to talk, to offer up talks in this vein. I know for me, anytime that I've done Ruby, uh, it's a pain. Uh, I don't know what they're using nowadays. It was RVM for a little while and then uh, the cabal said, no, we're not doing that anymore, we're doing something else. And so they came up with all these different ways of doing pretty much the same thing as, as Python virtual environments. <laughs> so if you would be willing to talk about something like that, that would be awesome. Uh, see us after the meeting, uh, send us a note over at board at mug.org. Or if there's anything else that you yourself know, other people may be interested in some knowledge that I have. Um, some folks are really good with setting up an Nginx server. Some people are really good with uh, wrangling Apache and certificates. All of us run into these problems all the time. So having some of that knowledge filter out from your head, through your mouth, to everyone's ears, would be awesome. So like, this is going to be the inaugural pain points. I'm not going to do any slides whatsoever. Um, this is a, an exercise for myself and an exercise for you all to see how something like this can work. And I wanted to do it as informal as possible because I don't want to go up here you know, and get all my slides, you know, and pictures of kittens, animated <laughs> and all this other kind of crap. And it's like, that, that's intimidating. What's really fun is live coding. <laughs> What's also very dangerous. scary is live coding yeah, as dangerous. well. So let's get started then and talk a little bit about <laughs> virtual environments. So what is a Python virtual environment to start off with? Well, Python has, well first off, Python is, is very successful. So you can go on to just about any Linux, Unix based machine and find Python on there. You can find it on Apple, you can find it on just about every Linux distribution out there. If you're lucky, you can find it on a Windows environment. The problem is that on a Linux environment and on a OS X environment, and all the other BSDs and all that other wonderful stuff, sometimes that Python is doing system level stuff. So you don't necessarily want to be screwing around with the system level Python. So installing different packages may overwrite certain other things. And those other things may not be ready for the new versions of those packages. So you're either stuck doing app get, you know, install Python, whatever, from the system level. And that may be good for the most part. But if you're a developer, like I'm sorry, some of you are, or if you're installing something, like many of you are, certain packages are going to want the latest and greatest stuff. And if you install the latest and greatest stuff in your system level Python, things will go very weird for you. And especially if you use a system level package and then you decide to do pip install blah 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 into your system level, it's going to end badly because the system level package is going to get out of sync with whatever you're doing uh, on that system. So what a virtual environment gives you is it gives you a safe area that you can throw code into. So what that looks like, Python 3, there's, there's uh, several different versions. I'm going to talk about the Python 3 version first and then I'm going to talk about Python 2 because as much as the Python community wants it to, uh, Python 2 is going to be hanging around much past the 2020 date that Python 2 is magically going to just disappear off into the ether. Um, so let's talk about this real quick. So Python 3, there's a module called VENV, V-E-N-V for virtual environment. And you create a directory. I'm just gonna call it foo because that's my standard directory for this stuff. And what that will do is that will look like it's doing absolutely nothing. 
But what it has done is it's created a food directory, and what's in there are several different reference directories. So you have your bin directory, you have an include directory, a library directory, a lib64 directory, and your pyvm config file. All right, so we've created the virtual environment. Now how do we get it set up? First thing we need to do is we need to source the binary, the bin activate. And let me make this just a little bigger so that everyone can there see what's going on. Isn't that awesome? I'm just going to ask that. Yeah. Okay. Let me do it there. Camera likes that better. I bet the camera likes it better. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't focusing too well. How did I do that? I did uh, control shift and then plus. And you can do control minus and that will uh, make it smaller as well. So that's in the GNOME terminal. It's also control zero. Control zero. Control zero. Okay, I didn't know that. See, learn something new. Pain points. There you go. Presentation on how to use GNOME terminal. Just saying. <laughs> source. <laughs> Presentation is over with. <laughs> so you source bin activate. And what that does, that's a shell script that sets up your Python environment. And I can take a look at that real quick. Um, it's not going to mean a whole heck of a lot. But what is in there is activate. That's a bunch of configuration that sets your shell environment, that sets the library environment, that tells Python, hey, you're going to be installing into this directory, so don't get weird, um, and all that other stuff. So that's what's in there. There's also uh, a pip. So you have pip, pip3, and pip3.4. I'm on a Ubuntu 14.4 uh, machine right now, so it's going to use Python 3.4 as it's default Python. I'll show you how to use different Pythons a little bit later on for your per, uh, virtual environment. But what we can do here is we can install something. Let's install requests. Uh, let's do pip install upgrade pip. So what this is doing is this is upgrading the system level Python uh, package installation program called pip. And what this will do, instead of upgrading the system level version of, uh, which is 1.5.4 on this machine, it will install the latest and greatest version, which is 9.0. Whatever. It's going to 1.5 to 9.0. Yes. What could go wrong? Yeah. <laughs> and this is this is part of it because if you install something like this on your system level Python, you're you're making this huge jump. So. I don't think it's actually going to care much because I don't think much of the stuff actually installs uh, using the system level pip. Um, but uh, if you're, you know, installing something that's at one level, you know, a two dot level, and it's going to a three dot level, and it's binary, you know, not backward compatible, things will break. So you were just now in the virtual environment. I'm still in the virtual environment, and I've got my shell set up in such a way. Virtual environment, I missed that part. How did I get into that virtual environment? Well, let me show you how to get out of the virtual environment, and then I'll show you how to get back into it. So if I use deactivate, that gets me out of the virtual environment. So if I do pet version, hopefully that'll do something useful. Yeah, that's 1.5.4. If I do source bin slash activate, I'm back in there. And now if I do pet version, now I've got 9.0.1. OK? Hang on, it gets fun. So I have two, two pips, two pips in one. Uh, so if I wanted to install, um, let's say Django, and I think this is going to get weird on me because, yeah. Uh, if you use a proxy and you use an Ubuntu machine that has a proxy on it, uh, requests gets a little weird on you for whatever reason, because it doesn't understand how to use the SOX um, environment variable. It wants to use SOX5. And I filed a bug on this, and they're like, no, it should be using SOX5. You need to change all of your stuff, um, <laughs> you Ubuntu folks. And I'm like, yeah, that's not going to happen. It's 14.4. It's pretty much frozen. So I get to deal with that. So let's say I'm installing Django. And let's say that I'm going to exit out of that and then rebuild it so that way it understands the correct environment. So I can tell you, tell it to look for SOC. No, it's still going to look for the proxy. All right. You tell it not to do that again. Again, live code in. Let's see if that'll 
Okay, so. Could you kill the variable? I killed the variable, but it's still getting into the, um, the shell. Talk amongst yourselves. Uh, <laughs> all right, let me just unset it. That was what I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. So maybe that'll work. All right. So let's try this again. So source foo. And activate. Boom. All right. Install Django. Do my bidding computer. There it goes. So now it'll install the wheel. Because now it's PIP 9, it understands how to install wheels. So it won't have to try and figure out how to compile all this wonderful stuff. What's Wheel? Uh, wheel is a format that Python uses for packaging. Um, it's supposed to be, from what I understand of it, it's supposed to be uh, able to be, have binary stuff in it as well. So like on Windows, it'll work in Windows, it'll work in uh, Linux and that. So it, won't, so it won't get into the situation where you have to install a compiler so that you can run something like SQL Alchemy and then all the wonderful C libraries and that. Because Python, unfortunately, is not pure Python. So now I've got Django installed. Okay, so now I can do my Django, blah, 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 whatever. Django admin. Now let's say I wanted to install a different program. So let me deactivate. And let's say I wanted to have a different environment. Whoa! Yeah, let me set, let me set up a different environment. So I'll do Python 3. Uh, dash V, uh, dash M, and R. Because I'm very creative. <laughs> So let's go to the bar. Install. Upgrade. Now, some of you may notice that I'm actually typing in pip install dash dash upgrade pip over and over and over and over again. And one of my rules is that if I have to type in something more than once, don't want to do that. So there is a way to get around that. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. Uh, it's called virtual env wrapper. Uh, the problem is that virtual env wrapper hasn't really kept up with the later pythons. So stuff that, stuff that sort of worked before doesn't work in later pythons. So but I'll show you what I, what I do use. Uh, and we'll see if we can figure out how to get it to work. Could you use a requirements text? You could. You could do that. Um, one sec. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. So let's install, what do we want to install? SQL Alchemy. Alright, so this is going to do its little SQL Alchemy. But what's happening here is I'm in a separate environment. This is not affecting the foo environment at all. This is only affecting the bar environment. So if I see you back over to foo and take a look over here in the library. Site packages. That's all the stuff that was installed for Django. So that's not getting affected at all by the pyramid stuff. So I don't have to worry about overwriting any of this stuff. Yes? Can you put your, your uh, Python code in the environment, or can you call it from outside the environment? You can call it from outside the environment. Um, I'll show you a best practice for how to handle that. Um, how, do you, how do you tell if you're in or out of the virtual environment? Uh, one way to tell is to, uh, if you source this, it changes your your, uh, your prompt on there. Um, there's another way to do this as well. So let's say I want to get out of this. And let's say I want to, if I do this, uh, no, let me do this. Um, so then Python 3. If I run that Python directly, 
um, it will have all the environment associated with it because it has enough brains about it. Um, he said, hand wavingly. Um, it understands enough about this particular environment so that it understands if I execute either of these Python executables in here, it will use any of this stuff from this particular environment. Okay? Now that's kind of a tricky thing because I know a lot of folks are like, oh, I'm just I'm executing this particular Python. How do I know which Python I'm executing? Well, one way to do that would be to do the full path. And there you have import Django. And boom, there you go. So you know which Python you're running. And one of the other things, um, one of the other things that got crazy about virtual environments is that people didn't know which virtual environment they were in, as you as you said, or which Python was creating that particular virtual environment. Because I have several different Pythons in this system. So if I do Python, you see I've got 2.7 on here, I've got Python 3.4, I've got I've got those two Pythons, I could have more on there if I wanted to. So if I wanted to create a virtual environment, uh, through another way, then I would have, um, let me back up here. There's another way to create a virtual environment on the system, and that's called virtual env. Um, and this is considered the old way. This is the way that you have to specify which version of Python you're using. So let me do the old version, Python equals which? Python 2. And I'll give it another thing, Baz, because again, it's very creative here. So this is creating an environment called Baz. And if I do source bin Baz, then activate. Now I'm in the Baz environments. Now, now if I type Python here, I'm going to get Python 276 in here instead of Python 3, like we're used to before when I did the other way. And so there's the preferred way to do this if you're running Python 3 is to use the dash M VM in order to uh, create your environment. And if you're using an older version, uh, you have virtual environment, virtual M. Yes? That command virtual M, mm -hmm. can you man page that? Can you make other virtual environments for other uh, is it Python only specific? Python. This only works with Python. Python. Oh, yeah, okay. this is only Python. Um, and again, this is this is uh, the virtual m command is considered an older older way to use it for Python two. For Python two, if you're using it, go ahead and use virtual m. Um, I hope nobody's going to strike me down for saying that, but that would be the way that I would go about using it. Um, there's also another command that I would use, and I'm going to show you this real quick. Whoa, no, don't oh. declare, deactivate. Oh, we got your room password. I okay. hope not. I really hope not. <laughs> but then again, I don't have an SSH turn on, so go for it. Um, <laughs> there's a command that I use called MKV, or make, uh, make virtual environment. There's a sys uh, set of tools called virtual env wrapper. So if I'm creating a, a Python 2 environment, I'll do mkvenv, and then let's say I'll do foo. Now, what you'll see is that I'm not overwriting the foo directory. I'm actually putting it in a different location. <coughs> and you also see all the things that I've got in here. Because again, don't like to type. So what this will do is this will automatically install a new version of pip. This will install pep8 so that I can run pep8 on this stuff because why wouldn't you? Uh, this <laughs> installs pigments, um, pdbpp, which is a debugger. So you'll set, you'll know, oh, hey, I'm running foo, what version of, of uh, Python am I running? 276. Why is it not using this particular thing? Well, funny you should ask, he said leadingly. I have a directory called virtual amps. And what this has inside of it is this has a directory of all my virtual environments stored in here. So I don't have to keep them in a separate directory. They're all tucked away in this lovely little directory here. So if I do lsvenv, lsvirtualenv, it will show 
all of the virtual environments that I have stored in here. And if I want to remove those, so let's say, no, not declare, deactivate. If I want to remove a virtual environment, I can do rm virtual and foo, and it will remove that in that particular directory. So this is one approach that I've used for setting up virtual environments, because it, there's nothing easier than say, mkv project name. What package is mkv in? Uh, MKB is under um, it's under virtual env wrapper, and I have a I think I have an alias, so that I'm sort of cheating. Let me see if I got an alias for that. Uh, yes, I'm cheating. So I have a virtual env uh, make virtual env uh, command, and that is part of um, let's see. Isn't it virtual and dash wrapper or something similar? I think I think that's what it is. Uh, I thought it gave you that. No, it's gonna it's gonna be complaining about this. Uh, I think it's part of the virtual and wrapper package, but for whatever reason, the way that it installs itself, it's a little weird. And I think, and if I'm recalling correctly, of course this is a machine that I set up a long time ago, so I don't remember all the magic that I did in order to get it to work. Um, there's some scripts that it installs. So if I do dpackage l uh, virtual env wrapper, if I type it correctly, there are some. Uh, where are they? I thought they were in here. I think there's bash completion in here, but I think there's also a, a .sh file, which I can see. Of course, it's going to show me everything. Thank you. There's That's a couple. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so it, it's running these particular scripts here in order to set up the virtual env uh, environment initially. So those get sourced. I think I have them sourced in my bash rc as well. Rep for those instead of showing you all the loveliness of my bash RC file. No, they're not in there. They're getting executed somehow. I don't remember exactly how they're getting executed. But are there any questions so far? I know I've moved a little quick. Yes. Um, how much depth can you go to in virtual in the virtual environment? For example, you picked one and you went from version 1.5 to version 9. Mm -hmm. So, but within nine, if there was another maybe combination of different tools, you can invoke another virtual environment inside um, that. So, uh, these all they have to have an internal stack. So, how deep can it go? I think you can only go one level deep. On oh, the, yeah. Okay. Because I and you might be able to go a little deeper. I would caution against that because you're doing some shell foo in order to get Python to work in that instance. So if you're setting up a virtual environment, and I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the fragility of this environment okay. as well. Um, but if you, I think you could only go one level deep because of the way that it's, it's hacking around your shell and setting environment variables. And there's, there's some folks that aren't too, too, too terribly keen on how virtual environments work, and I think they're trying to work on a different way to do this because it is a little hacky and how it works. Hold on a second. Yes? So I was curious. Uh, Whenever you're creating a new virtual environment, mm -hmm. how much of, I guess, the system Python or whatever does it copy into it? Does it just set up links back to it, and then whatever deltas you make inside stay in that, or does it make it a complete copy, and then you can do something crazy like blow away your system Python? Uh, you cannot blow away your system Python. That would be bad. Um, you can, however, um, it still relies on your system environment Python. It does not rely on the packages that you've installed in your system level Python. So it, that's that's clean on that end. Um, there there is a switch that you used to have to pass called no system packages, where you could tell it don't use any of the system packages. They made that a default because everyone started doing dash dash no system packages and it was a long command line, and it was pretty much a default behavior that everyone wanted anyway because they wanted to section it off and cordon it off. Um, 
So, in one sense, you're still reliant on your system Python. However, or whatever Python you have installed, you're still reliant on that to be there. Um, as far as the system packages, though, it tries to break and make a clean break for you. Okay. Um, unless you tell it otherwise, unless you tell it, use the system packages for it. Yes? Yeah. Uh, you cannot put a virtual environment under a virtual environment. But you could put multiple ones side by side. Yeah, they're all side by side. So right. So so you could still accomplish everything. But basically, have six things going side by side, and you could probably figure out a way where they could talk to each other if you wanted to. Uh, you, they, they're basically separate Python instances at that point. So you, it's it's whatever you're running Python wise. So it wouldn't right, necessarily right. care about the environment. If you had to go through the internet or something, you could. Oh yeah, way. no. It, it's it, it, again. It's 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 like setting up. It's that. It's not as deep as installing separate virtual machines. It's not yeah. as, as deep as doing containers. It's only as deep as setting up like a different truth or something like that, okay. in a sense for for that particular environment. But not as truty as a truth is. Mm -hmm. Right, but but multiple ones side by side. Yeah, no, that's then perfectly fine. You could be doing a whole bunch of stuff all at the same time. Oh yes, I do that all the time. Yes. So I've been using Anaconda. Mm -hmm. so it's like a package that has multiple ones connected. Can you install Anaconda into one of these virtual environments? I don't know. Um, I don't know how Anaconda does all of its stuff. It kind of has its own packaging environment. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Anaconda is a they used to be called Continuum Analytics, and I think they just renamed themselves Anaconda uh, in a fit of peak. Um, so they, they are a, a different packaging system, primarily, I think, for pandas. And so that scientific, or, packaging scientific packaging. Yeah. yeah. OK. And um, I don't know how that plays with, uh, with this type of stuff. I believe it okay. uses virtual environments. I think it uses virtual environments under the hood. Yeah. But as far as what it does, I've not played around to that level. All right. mm -hmm. Yes? So, uh, someone playing off of this other question, variable scope, can these different environments share uh, data back and forth, or would you have to use some kind of database to store data? They're, they're just Python running in a, in a shell environment. It's just, it's, it's, just, process. it's just mucking around with environment variables to run a different version of Python. So, whatever level you're at on your system, it's basically running that particular Python, and it can do whatever it needs to do in that environment. Anything else? Yeah. All right, let's get a little crazy here. So under, oh, I was in the correct directory. That's That's your system. Uh, so in this directory, you'll notice that I have several different scripts in here. And one of those scripts, Post make virtual environment. This particular script, this is part of virtual env wrapper as well. And what I have is, I have it install uh, requests. And I think I was trying to work around the socks thing up there. I'm not sure why that was there. Um, I also have it installing pip and doing an upgrade on it and installing pep8 and pdbpp. So again, anytime that I create a virtual environment using MKV or make virtual env, that's installing all of those packages and doing the upgrades and such. So that makes it really handy. You don't have to type it in all the time. That's really cool. Um, what else do I want to cover here? Uh, so if you're setting up a container, uh, so I use LXC for containerizing stuff. So let me uh, do a list. All right, let me start off with a separate one. And I'm going to launch an Ubuntu 16.04, uh, just to show you a little later Python. Uh, let's call this virtual. I'm going to really misspell virtual. <laughs> Forgive that, please. And I'm going to do an LXC exec virtual env. Be a slow computer, be a fast computer. The power saving uh, It's just it's just an old computer, and this this computer is back from the 2012s. Uh, uh, no, not exact bash. 
All right. So let me do an app get update real quick. So let's say you just installed your brand spanking new 1604 uh, Ubuntu desktop because you're on the LXC, uh, the uh, latest LT, uh, LTS. What do you need to do in order to install stuff? And what can you what can you get right out of the box? So I can at get install Python 3 VM, and that will get me uh, install. Why don't we tell it what to do? Install. All right, so this is going to install Python pip wheel, uh, Python 3 VM, and Python 3.5 VM. So let's do that. Do Python 3 dash and VM again. All right, so that's how you can get yourself set up with uh, Python in a new environment. So again, source foo and activate. So using this particular version of Python, let's do pip install. This is uninstalling 8.1, um, so the later versions are those particular machines. And then, install this one. It's an interesting package that has a lot of dependencies. Pygame? Pygame, yeah, let's see if that works. That probably will not work. Oh, somebody need a wheel for it. Darn it. That's not going to be interesting at all. Anyways, so now I've got my <laughs> game installed on there. All right. Um, so that's that's the basics of, of uh, Python virtual environment. Now, I know I've covered a lot of stuff, and I know we're going to cover it rather quickly in that, but are there any other questions before we wrap this up? Yes? Can you add a Python virtual environment to an already existing subdirectory? So, like, say if you were building, if you had a software project you were building. Ah, yes, yes. I did not answer your question, and that's that's what I should answer your question. So, if you wanted to actually move any of these things, what would you do? And the answer is, you wouldn't move them. You would recreate them. Uh, so, let's say I have a project. Uh, so, CD my projects, and let's make a uh, project mug project. Okay, and then it's in the bug project. I'll create my requirements. TXT, good person. So I'm going to install Django here just for, just for grants. All right, so I'm in my project. What would I do here? I would first off Python 3 -M -M, and I create my virtual environment. Now, the problem with virtual environments is you cannot move them. Uh, putting this into Git would be counterproductive for you and for everyone else because A, it's tied to your particular machine, and B, no one else would be able to run it. So if I wanted to move this out of this particular directory, let's say I wanted to move um, move remote projects uh, over my downloads folder just for, for grins, what's going to happen? It's probably not going to work. Up there, my project, project, project to download. Yes, it, it didn't. Oh, move it said it couldn't chat. It. Yeah. It's because he was trying to move the directory. I was trying to move the plural, and I needed to move the singular. Uh, so let's see what this does. <laughs> of it course, works. it's going to work. <laughs> of course, it's going to work. It's going to make me a liar. Uh, and the reason that it still works is because it still knows where the Python is. Here. It's still confined Python 3 and it can still make a link to that particular thing. As a rule though, do not move virtual environments if you can avoid it. Um, it's just it's, it's not going to end well and, and of course checking it in isn't going to end well for you either. Um, even though I think these are just shell scripts. Yeah, of course they're shell scripts. 
But it's also trying to run this particular version of Python. And it's still projects, yeah. So it can get a little confused. So if I try and run pip, what's it going to do? Yeah. So it's going to run pip and it's going to say it's a bad interpreter. So it's going to get a little bit confused on what's going on. So that's that's one reason not to check them in. Um, one thing that uh, I did in one of my previous positions, or that we did, is that we created a, a VE directory. So in this case, we would do uh, mkdir uh, mug project ve. And so under mug project ve, we do something like python3 dash mvm. And then create it in this particular directory, and then move the product directory under this. So that way, we could have a way to source the, uh, the files that we're running on a particular project. So that way, too, you're not check, you're not in danger of checking in that particular virtual environment directory. Mm -hmm. So if I want to move that, uh, my project. So then, somebody else on your pro on your project team would just use your requirements text to get all the packages they need. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So that's about all we have time for right now. Um, again, if there's any questions, yes. Would it make sense if we were installing? To, to package up it like a Debian uh, package and have it use virtual environment in order to satisfy complicated requirements? Probably not. And the reason being is that Debian has its own Python stuff. So I would I would recommend in the case of Debian to try and use the Python packages for Debian itself rather than trying to use a virtual environment. Um, I'm not a Debian developer though, so maybe they can speak better to whether they would want you to use a virtual environment. Um, but I can't see them being too thrilled with that when they have Debian packages. They'd probably just say, just install a new version of the Debian package and then make that a requirement. And then play with Debian dependency help. Have your comment.